Yo dudes, what's up? This is Planet Keith, I'm Keith, and today I'm going to show you, well, something some of you have asked to see. I'm going to do a quick run-through and partial review of a load of new kit that I recently got. So mostly what I'll be talking about in this video is audio gear, camera bodies, and lenses, and some accessories, and tripod. <laughs> Uh, and um, hopefully it won't get too technical, but sometimes you just have to do these things, so bear with me. Anyway, first of all, audio. I've always used a clip-on Lavalier mic, and um, that's been fine in terms of audio quality, because you've got your clothes to kind of dampen the echo of the, you know, acoustically hostile kitchen that I shoot most of my videos in and um, but the, the downside of that is you are physically tied to the camera with a cable so you can't move about so much you know um, and it really really started to get on my nerves so I was looking for a solution and you know a fairly cheap and obvious solution to me was a shotgun mic which sits on top of the camera it fixes to the, the camera using the uh, hot shoe and this one, this is a Rode Video Micro, um, <laughs> which comes with this magnificent dead cat. And um, also this shock absorber. This is a liar, um, no, a Rycote liar shock absorber. If that lasts more than a year, I'll be surprised. So definitely registering the guarantee for that one. Um, but also it gets it, its power from the audio socket of the camera so you don't have to mess about with batteries and switching it on and everything. Um, and I thought that would be great, uh, except it wasn't. When, when it was mounted on the camera, which is, you know, normally a couple of metres away, it just sounded awful. It, it was picking up echoes from, you know, tiled walls, floor, hard ceiling. You know, there's, there's not a scrap of soft furnishing in the kitchen, obviously. Um, so in the end, well, I tried a few solutions. I tried putting it inside a, a tube with, like, you know, foam lining, um, which slightly worked, but was cumbersome. And then I thought, ah, mic stand. <laughs> As it happens, I've got a boom mic stand, which I've had forever, and I figured out a way to fix this onto that. Um, but that then created another problem, because this little cable, as you can see, won't stretch two metres. Now, I also have a two or three meter audio extension cable, but when I tried it with that, it, it just gave massive buzzing interference and badness. So I had to buy another cable, um, <coughs> which is this one, which is also made by Rode and uh, screened or shielded. Anyway, does the job. So that's, that's quite cute. But I thought while I'm uh, messing about with audio, uh, which, which is actually a problem for me because I'm rich in years. Your um, audible range decreases, so I can't hear low-pitched rumbles and high-pitched squeaks and buzzes. I just can't. They just don't exist for me. So, you know, um, other people can and they tell me about them. <laughs> anyway, uh, so I thought I'll, I'll get another mic, um, which may, maybe I'll see if I can use this in the kitchen because it seems pretty good. It's, uh, it's a condenser mic and, um, you know, it looks professional, uh, but the price wasn't. It was actually less than 50 quid for, the, for all, all of this, the uh, angle poise, uh, a shock mount, the microphone itself, um, a pop filter, p -p 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 Peter Piper, Big to Pack of Big Bill Pepper, and um, another thing, oh, uh, a, a little windshield which I don't know if you need that indoors or with the pop filter, so we'll find out. Anyway, um, but the downside of this is it's, it needs phantom power, um, which is a bizarre thing to me, um, but you know, it's, it's what happens in the industry. So you need a phantom power supply. Now, some professional cameras can supply this, and so can mixing boards, but if you don't have that available, you need to buy something like this. Um, and that wasn't very expensive. But it comes with these uh, XLR connectors, 
which are fairly heavy duty, um, and a few miles of cable, and obviously it has to be plugged into the mains. So, you know, no good on location, that one. Anyway, well, let's take a generator. <laughs> So that's the audio stuff. Let's um, have a look at the cameras. Two cameras. So for four or five years, I've been using as my main camera, um, Canon EOS M, which is a mirrorless camera with a, an APS-C sensor. Now that's the same kind of, of sensor as is used on a lot of DSLRs. And it's, it gives you a really high quality image. Um, and I love it for that. Uh, and also I love it because it's got an audio input which is pretty much essential but that's that's about where the love affair with this camera ends uh, especially now I've got the new ones and also I like to shoot my videos with two cameras so one that's doing an overview of me talking to camera and chopping things up and another one that's focused on what's happening on the worktop and all the pans and things but my second camera was a Canon point and shoot and the the quality of the image it's well you know it's it, nowhere nowhere near what you get on the EOS M the sensor on on the point and shoot is I don't know maybe a tenth of the size which is important so initially I started looking for a decent um, second camera to replace that point and shoot and um, quickly it became apparent that uh, I, I need to actually step up the game a bit because uh, there's this thing called 4K, ultra high definition. And 4K has been around for a bit, but it hasn't actually, you know, grabbed the world's attention very much yet, mainly because 4K tellies were very expensive, but now they are coming down in price. And, uh, you know, I, I, I think in, in a year or two, all new tellies will be 4K. It'll just become the new normal. So I thought, actually, while I've got the chance, I, I, I need to get onto the 4K bandwagon. Um, and that means two new cameras. So, yeah, that's what I've done. It probably didn't cost as much as you might expect, um, because basically what I did was I, I just looked at the entire internet, or, you know, that part of it involved in making cameras, and realised that Canon are screwing their customers royally. They, they're, they're positioning 4K as, you know, a top end thing and um, so you pay a premium for it and you've got to buy you know uh, the the top of the range cameras from them at top of the range prices uh, whereas the likes of Panasonic who make the Lumix brand of cameras um, they don't carry all that baggage of trying to differentiate within a vertical market um, they're, they're a conglomerate and they make 4K tellies, so they've got serious interest in pushing 4K on their cameras, which is good news for me, <laughs> because, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's commonplace and it's, it's not considered a premium option. So, anyway, enough waffling. So I decided to ditch Canon and go with Lumix. Um, and the, the other thing about these cameras, they're also mirrorless, but they're micro four thirds, which is a standard jointly developed by Olympus and Panasonic uh, about 10 years ago and adopted by, by quite a few other manufacturers since then. So what that means is you've got a great range of lenses uh, and, you know, a great range of cameras. So, yeah, uh, so the sensors are a little bit smaller than APS-C. Uh, which really only matters in very low light, and I don't shoot in very low light, so, you know, uh, not a problem. So, okay, first camera, the little one, uh, <laughs> the gorgeous little one, I think. Um, this is uh, a GX800, and it's it's almost point-and-shoot dimensions, I, you know, the lens, that lens that it comes with is uh, is a bit chunkier than on a point and shoot but also it's a proper lens so and this is a proper 4k camera they make it in black and silver and uh, there's a tan version but this orange version which i think is super cool um, in the uk is exclusive to john lewis and i was watching this on the website and it was like only 10 left hurry hurry and then nine eight and then by the time i was ready to buy it it was zero uh, they'd run out so um and no indication of when they'd 
get more stock in. Uh, so I put my name on, a, on an email list to be notified when they did get some in. Meanwhile, I thought, you know, Panasonic aren't just going to make a special one-off camera and only sell it to John Lewis in the UK. There must be other ways to get this. So I found a supplier in the Netherlands and I bought it from them. And ironically, on the day it arrived, I got an email from John Lewis saying, oh, we've got that camera you wanted. Um, shall, shall we send you one? Give us some money. <laughs> Which was, you know, a bit late. Anyway, I got this as a kit, including the lens, which is a 12 to 32 uh, telephoto. And um, it's, I think, uh, f3.5 to 5.6, which is not too shabby for a, a lens like that. And um, yeah, that's cute. It also came with a uh, 32 gig memory chip, which unfortunately is uh, micro SD, which I really don't like because, you know, they're tiny and very easy to lose, but can't have everything. So it's got a flip up screen if you want to take selfies and um, uh, that's touch sensitive as well. And all kinds of bells and whistles. And because it's aimed at the consumer market, it's a bit simpler than um, a, big, a bigger, you know, more expensive camera. But uh, it, it does have all the bells and whistles or most of the bells and whistles that are on the big camera as well, but they're just hidden away so as not to frighten people. Um, so I've not actually used this really very much yet. And uh, I need to read the manual. In fact, I need to download the manual because I bought it from Holland. So the manual that came with it is in Dutch. And <laughs> yeah, never mind. Oh, and did I mention this cost around about 400 pounds for the body, lens and chip, which is a pretty great value for that kind of camera. Okay, the main camera is uh, Lumix GH4. Now, I got this second hand from a company called MPB um, and I'm absolutely thrilled to bits with it because it's in excellent condition. You wouldn't know it was second hand. And uh, the price, well, um, this isn't the most current in the series of this camera, there's now a GH5, but uh, it, it, it is specifically built for people like me who do vlogging, as they call it, and uh, it's wonderful. It's got all kinds of video related bells and whistles that, you know, Canon give you on, or sell you on their very high end cameras. And these guys give you, because you need them. So. I paid £700 for this body, which might sound a bit staggeringly expensive, but it isn't because, um, well, the GH5, current version of this, is uh, around about 1800 So this is an absolute stonker of a bargain, really. So it's got a fold-out and flip-forward screen, which is great. It's also a touch screen. And it's got loads of knobs and dials and exciting things um, which are actually quite cleverly thought out especially these three here this is your EV compensation your ISO and your white balance all there at the touch of a button that you don't even have to look for um, and so you press one of those and then you twiddle the knob to adjust it a knob on the top or on the back either one works generally um, and yeah it's fabulous so let's stick a lens on it so this is my Fast Prime lens, also from MP MPB, and um, it's a 25mm f1.7 number. So nice, bright, fast lens that gives you fabulous shallow depth of field. And that was about £100 second hand. Uh, and it's in perfect condition and does what I need it to do. <laughs> so, in the world of micro four thirds, when people talk about focal lengths of lenses, that's 25 mil. That is equivalent to a 50 mil in you know standard lenses. And I don't understand the maths of it, but that's that's what it is. So any time a micro four thirds focal length is mentioned, just double it to 
figure out what, what it's the equivalent to. As in this one, this is 80 to 150 focal length. <laughs> yeah. So that's the equivalent. You, you know, the, you see these sports photographers with lenses a foot long or longer. Um, so this is the equivalent to one of those, uh, but you know, probably costs tenth of the price and it's probably about tenth of the weight and hopefully not a tenth of the quality. <laughs> so it's, it's actually the body, the barrel is made of plastic, which is a little bit tacky, but um, I'm not that bothered because it does work. So, you know, I can pop that on, pop that on there, or if I want to be a bit silly, here and you know if that's not a silly looking camera I don't know what is but yeah it's great so I haven't really used this either because the weather's been terrible this really would be superb for um, wildlife photography and you know stuff where you you want to take a picture from a distance without disturbing the subject oh one other thing um, this didn't come with a, a memory card so I had to buy it separately and um, yeah, that hurt. <laughs> I got this 32 gig U3 SD card. Now um, U3 is, it's, it's not a total standard because you can get, U3, not all U3 chips are equal. Um, what it means is it can do a, a data transfer rate of about 100 MPBS. And, uh, but this one can actually do it 150 which for 4k is absolutely the kind of thing you need now this chip we're used to memory chips costing almost nothing these days uh, this one costs 40 pounds and you know so i was i was hoping that 32 would be okay and it is because generally my 4k shooting sessions come in at about 20 gig and um so yeah so it fits on there nicely and yeah, 40 pounds. But then I, I consoled myself by thinking back to when I got my very first computer it, back in the 80s, I think. It was a, a 386 SX with one megabyte of RAM. And very quickly I upgraded that to two megabytes. And that extra megabyte cost me 30 pounds, which was pretty much the standard price for RAM in those days. For Well, for years and years. Um, and also, you know, the computer exchange rate so 30 pounds is 30 dollars and somebody's making a lot of money out of that uh, and yeah so in today's money <laughs> to to get a 32 gigabyte chip um at 30 pounds a megabyte would cost you 96,000 pounds so yeah i feel better now <laughs> And finally, I mentioned both, both cameras are uh, 4K. They also both have Wi-Fi, which is wonderful because it means I can use an app to control the cameras. So the Panasonic Image app, um, I have it on my iPad paired with this camera and I have it on my phone paired with that one. Um, so I have those devices here where I am um, and I can remotely control and switch off focus and various other things without having to keep on wandering around to the other side of the counter and remembering to unplug the Lavalier mic so you know freedom <laughs> and the other great thing on these is um, you've got uh, an intervalometer built in which means you can do time-lapse photography very easily and that's on here as well not only does it make it very quick and easy to set up a time-lapse at the end of it it co the, compiles the video in camera which is brilliant the only thing is uh, battery life so I, I, I haven't brought it in here but I'm I, I've got a well basically a mains power unit that so I can run this camera off the mains and it's it's got a thing that is shaped like the battery that goes in the battery compartment and that's brilliant um there's not that option for this one but uh, i have got a spare battery for this so yeah and also lots of filters and other bits and bobs 
that you don't need to know about because it's not that interesting. <laughs> right, uh, finally, a couple of tripods. I've got this. This is basically a toy and um, mini tabletop tripod so that I can, you know, get in close to food when I'm shooting it. But I also got this beast of a tripod. Um, it's a Vanguard Alta Pro something, I think. <laughs> It is seriously sturdy, um, and, but also beautifully engineered and made. And I like that it has these twist grips on the leg. I like that it has the leg section is in three parts, not four or five. And um, it's got a, a nice um, ball head on there. But the thing I really like is you can do this. You can raise the center column. And then you can release it and you can set it to a horizontal or other angle so you can quite easily do wonderful overhead shots using this um, so that's that's great I don't think I'd be going hiking with that and um, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm really thrilled I never thought a tripod could be <laughs> as complicated it's, it's it's got more knobs and levers than a jumbo jet uh, but yeah they, they they feel nice rubberized grippy and yeah and actually as i was setting up to to shoot this video i had to go back to my old tripod which is a a, a manfrotto lightweight thing and it is so flimsy and yeah <laughs> so there you go all my new stuff well some of it when you take the plunge into the, the world of 4K, suddenly your files become, you know, a whole lot bigger and everything takes a whole lot more number crunching. So what you need is a new computer, and I got one. Um, this is, this is going to be quite a long video, so I won't uh, show you the computer in this one. But maybe next time we'll go into the office and see the other new toy. <laughs> Anyway, all my new goodies, if you liked it, give it a like, subscribe, become a patron or make a donation, and thanks for watching, and see you next time.